selecting a pump for domestic use, be it to pump harvested rainwater or as a municipal backup, unfortunately is not as simple as walking into builders and picking one of these off the shelf. There's a lot of different factors to be considered and I'm going to touch on these briefly today. Now here I have a selection of pumps, various brands and models. The discussion here is on the theory, which is the same across all pumps. And before I forget to tell you, you're gonna need a pressure switch that starts the pump automatically when someone opens a tap and switches it off when it's not needed. Now before you buy a pump, you should find yourself asking two important questions. Let's look at these one at a time. The first question, how many meters vertically am I needing to pump the water? Are my tanks at the bottom of the garden? Now this height is referred to as pump head. Different pumps are capable of pumping water to different heads. So you'd need to measure the height required. Now if your tanks are at the same level or above the house, this part is not very important, but carry on listening. So now 10 meters of vertical lift is equivalent to one bar. So where a pump is capable of pumping, say six bars on level, if we were to pump the water 20 vertical meters, the effective pressure would only be four bars. That same pump would in theory be able to pump a trickle of water to 60 meters high. Now, if you're needing to suck or draw water into the pump, this height needs to be included in the calculation. Again, 10 meters equals one bar. The second question you need to ask is how many liters of water do I need per minute? Now, where a pump specifies how many liters it can supply, this is generally at zero ahead. Our same pump now is only able to deliver less liters at higher heads. And these graphs are readily available either on websites or in this case, printed on the box. Now this 0.37 kilowatt pump, we can see it can supply 25 liters per minute at zero head. But as the head increases, so the liters drops. Now another factor here to consider is friction loss, which is where the water sticks to the inside of the pipe as it travels. This means that if I took a really long pipe, the point would come that no water would come out of the end due to friction loss. Now there are some fancy maths equations to work this out, which are beyond me. But suffice to say, the larger the diameter of the pipe you use and the shorter the length, the easier it is to overcome this. Run your supply line as large as possible, but not larger than the outlet of the pump for as long as possible before reducing in size where it enters the house. Now generally, the smallest pump you would use for home use is a 0.37 kilowatt pump, capable of running one to two water points. So flush a toilet and run a tap at the same time. But if someone were to be showering, the pressure and the supply in the shower would drop. Now 0.75 kilowatt pump is capable of running home irrigation systems or three to four water points at a time, much more suited to a larger home. I personally have one of these at home and it's more than sufficient. You do also get a 1.1 kilowatt pump for large houses and the sizes keep increasing, but now we're getting out of the scope of domestic use. Now a variable speed pump or a VSD is designed to change its speed and therefore pressure and liters per minute based on demand. If you're in the shower and someone opens a tap, the pump increases in speed to supply both outlets at optimum pressure. This also means you save electricity cost as the pump is not always running at full power. Now a pump cannot suck water out of a container unless the supply line and the pump are full of water. In this case, a self-priming or jet pump may be needed. This pump stores water in a chamber and uses this water to prime the system. Now having a one-way valve at the bottom of the supply line will probably still be of assistance because a small pump like this cannot lift water more than about two to three meters. In short, there's a lot of things to consider before purchasing a pump, and you may find it necessary to do additional homework and ask those questions before committing to a purchase. Now, Builders has all of these pumps and more, both in-store and online at builders.co.za. For more videos like this, check out the blog on the website and check the link in the description below where I install a municipal backup system. Get to Builders, get it done.